Hey! Composing Gloves here. And today we're going to talk about the Fruity Multiman Compressor in the FL12 FX series. Now, if you have not watched my video about compression, like, whew, why didn't you watch that? Um, if you don't know what compression is, you should really go check it out. I believe it's called What is Compression? Because this, uh, a multiband compressor is substantially more complicated. Like, I'm going to need to have a whole separate video for this. I'm going to talk about some things and what they do and maybe give some examples with this amazing boss dope dink kick. As you can see, we're going to use this as an example. I'm going to cover some things here, but this is really a plugin. Uh, they've designed it with the idea of mastering, which uh, I could see myself using this for mastering. So let's dive right into this. To start off, we a multiband compressor has crossovers, so it's going to take your low end and your middle. I'll use that and then my high end. I'm going to be that sign. Why not? And it will take these three, these three bands and split your frequency spectrum up. And so uh, that's what's represented here. You can see we have our low band, our high band, and our, or our mid band, and our high band. And the deal with these bands are when they combine together, you get your whole frequency spectrum back. It's like a speaker uh, with crossover networks in them. You still get your whole spectrum back but they're assigned to different filters. So these are essentially filters. And if you got really creative, you could actually use these just as filters if that's something you wanted to do, which you might because it actually gives you IIR and FIR options, which we'll talk about. So you might be saying, but what about this spot right here and this spot over here where there's like, you know, a big hole? Well, well, that hole is not really there because when the these areas are being in two crossover networks, so they're getting, so they add up. And so you get more signal right there. So that's the thing. Now, so this recreates our spectrum. As you can see, we have three bands, and we have three bands, essentially three different compressors. Now, with that alone, you should already have an idea of what you're doing. You're going to compress this region separately from this one or that one. And so that is what's going on. So right off the bat, let's uh, play it. And okay, so when, I, when you turn your speed down, you can see these crossovers, and you can adjust them like so. Or... When you turn your speed on, they disappear, but as you play notes, you see them popping up. And so you see our audio, and if we turn our threshold on, my thresholds are all the way off, so essentially no compression. Let's compress the low band, so this, this orange one here I'm compressing, I put the threshold all the way down, so it'll experience the full fury. By the way, if you put the speed up here, it'll just, the audio will move through here faster, so. As you can see, it's mostly low end at this point. And so right here, the pink signal was our original signal and the red signal is our signal as it is being compressed or compressed, the affected signal. So uh, now let's talk about what's going on here. Now, can you adjust this, this band ratio? The answer is yes, you just move the crossovers. So if you want like your mid band to be gone and let's turn this back up. Hey, you hear that? That's because there's no band covering that part of the front, the spectrum, so it just disappears completely. So it's important that you have this uh, like that if you want your whole spectrum. If not, you can move them around. Now, I'm going to point out something that's going to be a little more advanced and involves a little bit of DSP. And so I'm going to say it in sort of a roundabout way. But yeah, that's what I'm going to say. So you're probably familiar with this, this area right here. This is called... So this is called your cutoff. So wherever this frequency begins to roll off, that's called your cutoff band. Now this is all fine and dandy, except for the fact that um, this can introduce phase nonlinear. It, it, it introduces phase distortion depending on the type of filter that they used. And the majority of that comes from an IIR, which means infinite impulse response, or an FIR, which is finite impulse response. So there's a whole bunch of reading and you kind of got to get into DSP to do this. What you need to understand is that part of your spectrum can be phase inverted. And I have a sound basic video tutorial series coming out, Sound and Synth Basics. And that'll be coming out soon. Go check that out when it comes out because it's going to help you understand what I'm talking about right now. But uh, these two these two types of it, so there are two types of impulse responses. Essentially what it is is... That cutoff I just pointed out, we have one, two, three, four of them. We have four of these cutoffs. That means we have four of these possibilities to experience phase shifts. What is a phase shift? I guess we should cover that. So when we move this, we get this nice line and we think that's how our filter really looks. And it's like, 
the GSP people are just laughing their heads off at us because that's not what's going on here. Sometimes specific frequencies in your spectrums can experience a phase shift, and that means that they, uh, if they had a phase, let me open up a massive real fast. M -m 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 massive, and it's opening. There it is. And so we have our phase. So let's just say that's our phase. One frequency, like maybe like 2K, all of a sudden switches a little bit. This changes the way our entire spectrum adds up. We're now filtering things we never intended to filter at all. And sometimes this can happen like way away from the way far away from the cutoff. So these have been designed rather well. Sometimes with an FIR filter, this is a... So that's what an IR filter does. And that's much more likely to do that. However, it's much more easy to implement and you can usually have more of them. An FIR filter is way easier to do in the digital realm. Tougher, almost like it's almost exclusively a digital filter. Almost. And because uh, there are weird theories and things. So as you move this around though, your FIR filter can delay things so that the phase is always in time, but you may experience a pre-ring. This particular, now that's as much as I'm really going to say about that. If you want to know more, um, I'll be coming out with more about that uh, one day, but that's really a more advanced concept and you're going to run into just tons of math. So you got to know your math and things. But so IR, FIR, what's the big difference? Well, IR is more likely to have that phase shift, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. You've probably even been experiencing it with EQs and things that you thought were your friends the whole time. And so they look like they're doing one thing when really they're doing another thing. Why am I spending all this time on this? Well, it makes a big difference when you bring your threshold into it. So when we start using these cutoff values, it starts to get pretty important. So let's uh, uh, turn it on. I'm going to have it on IIR. I'm going to move the threshold. And then I'm going to move... I guess it'd be easier if I did this. So let's get rid of these top bands. And here's the low filter, IIR. Here's the FIR. Now, not a huge difference. I'm going to change the ratio to be greater. Now, if we move it down, though... There we go. There we get an audible example. So as you can see, this isn't exactly the easiest thing to find sometimes, but it can make a big difference. So by the way, FabFilter has a wonderful thing of this, but they talk about minimum phase and uh, linear phase. Not, uh, linear phase is what FIR is, a linear phase filter. So again, I'm going to stop talking about that stuff. I just It's just a whole other topic. So, But here's the IIR. There's the FIR. Now, I happen to like the FIR more. You can see our low frequency almost disappears completely. The FIR, what it, what's happening right now is it's got a phase shift and we're losing a part of our fundamental. But if because we have these two crossovers interacting right here and they sum differently and because one's experiencing a phase shift, we experience this ripple up our sound. Well, I guess that's not the best idea or way to think about it, but you experience the way our frequency sum is different. But if we use the FIR, that gets delayed back so they're in phase and they don't subtract anymore and we get our fundamental back. That's a really, there we have a really noticeable difference. Because now it's happening up here too. So... That's a, and you'll notice on most of these settings are going to be FIR filters. Occasionally you'll want an IIR. And they can sound good too. You just got to find a good phase relationship. So if we were to... I don't know. I'm not going to spend the time right now trying to get it. FIR is doing what I want more. Occasionally, you'll want the IIR, though. Like, it's a really nice option to have. And I do recommend reading up on it. But anyways, that's what that does if you're, like, super curious about that. So we have this meter right here. It's got this little in button and out button. So right now, when it says in, this is a signal coming in. It's not the process signal. So, and all of these meters have this for each individual band. So that's what the signal's coming in. Here's the signal going out. So that's our output. We can change. We can use makeup gain here for the master band. So all these bands. You could turn it into a limiter. So you could use this as a limiter if that is your desire. Um, okay, now, do you have a threshold? So we have the low band, the mid band, the high band. You could set them here. Maximus, I recommend for some of this. But I do use this one 
for various reasons. I've ex you what it's just like any other plugin. You've got to use it and experiment with it and get a feel for it. And then during your creative process, you'll be like, reach for the multiband compressor. It's just like you know what it does, so you can use it now. So I recommend doing that. Now I have these three things up here. And they stand for, and in the top here, it actually tells you active. I believe this is muted. Yep, it's muted and bypassed. What's the difference between muted and bypassed? Well, bypassed still lets the signal through. Muted turns that band off. So, and then active, of course, is working. Now we have this C right here for the meter. It stands for compression. And when compression is applied, you can see the amount of reduction that's being applied. I really wish you could zoom this up. Uh, it's a request I have. It's not a big deal, but I just wish I could do that. Uh, okay, so we have this threshold. This is the threshold for the low band. So this orange band, where this orange band threshold is, can be like down here, while the mid band can have a higher threshold and be uncompressed along with the upper band. So you can do that. There's a number of reasons you'd want to do things like this. Like for the high band, you could put a higher threshold and make it a narrower band. Maybe you do something like this and move this up. That way your low stuff's here, but your mid band is almost only syllabants. And I really wish that you could see the frequency spectrum here so we know what frequencies we're like going for. But I guess using your ears, like that, that's like the most important thing. Only if it sounds good, does it really matter? But we could use this. We could compress this mid band now, put a higher threshold. And if we had syllabants in like our speech or whatever, we could attenuate those. So it's a de esser while everything else is being uncompressed. So you could use it like that. I wonder if they have a preset for that. D, a de esser. Uh, looking here I don't see one right off the bat but you could do that now you could say so you could set a separate threshold for each of these these thresholds can have their own needs their own ratios their own attack and release that's all covered in like my what is compression jazz and they have their own makeup gain so you could apply compression there apply makeup gain there and not apply makeup gain there now you might be saying why am I able to drive it so hard some of you might not some of you may not even know what I'm talking about at all which is a bad thing but if I open up my limiter, I've got a limiter going on, and it's also, that's like a bad thing. I keep it on there mostly so that I have a similar setup to new people when they open up FL. That's mostly the reason why I just haven't changed it. But it's something that you got to be aware of. You don't, you don't want that. You just, like, just so you know, you don't want that. I have a very specific reason for why I do that. That's pretty much the entire plugin. Um, I have not pointed out, if you have a fast attack and a fast release, and it, well, when your attack is faster than your release... Uh, you run into this interesting scenario where you're actually rewriting waveform data because it's turning the volume down so fast It's turning it down at the sample rate and then releasing it at the sample rate So you think you're hearing distortion, which I found this out just a little bit ago um, And it makes total sense. I don't know why I didn't think of it, but uh, Yeah, you're rewriting the waveform itself. So that's why you would get that. So yeah, it's the fruity multiband compressor If you have any questions, let me know drop them in the comments subscribe and have a blessed day Opposing worlds. Reversing.